Good morning. This is Donna Dunn and Lee Martell from the Historical Awareness Committee. We're here with Simon Audette and Charlotte Audette Baudet. Baudet. <laughs> Um, and we're going to do an interview. Um, they grew up on the east end of Dunbarton on Twist Hill Road. And why don't you tell us something about how your parents came to be here and how you grew up and that stuff. All right. Uh, my parents, our parents, came from Canada at the time of uh, when there was really a, um, <laughs> a lot of, you know, Immigrants? No, they, it, they were having a lot of <coughs> financial problems in Canada. So they separately came here and both of them started working at the St. Paul School. My dad was a um, salad chef, and my mom was a waitress and, and so forth and they met there. And um, they met there and my dad uh, decided that he wanted to buy a piece of property, a farm. So at that time he bought the farm and uh, they he they and got Dunbarton married. on Twist Hill Road. Yes, on 1930. I wish I had my other thing <laughs> to read to. You. I have it all written down somewhere. Okay. And uh, they got married in 1931, was it? Yeah. Their anniversary was uh, 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 was it the the twenty eighth of uh, was almost was still in the thirties the early early thirties you know mm -hmm. you know so and they had how many children here on the they farm? had four four and life was quite difficult at first when they first started because there was very little there was no electricity there was really water he they always had running water but my earliest me memory of the water in the kitchen was this great big barrel and it always flowed it was always fresh water flowing in this great big barrel and then whatever would drain out into the sink out of our constitutional they can't have local lead pipe probably about 1500 feet of lead pipe makes us subotomous <laughs> and so it tasted good. It tasted wonderful. Mm. And you had it, now did you have running water in a bathroom or did you? Mm. There wasn't a bathroom. Mm -hmm. there was I guess when um, my folks came here they had an outhouse in the barn, mm -hmm. in the shed, and that's where they would. Uh, so what was bath time like? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember taking a bath? Well, I remember when there was a little kid, we had to go in the bar and go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you do and heat uh, water on the stove yeah. and put it in a must have? Yeah. That's what my parents did when they were young. They heated water on the stove and put it in a big tub on the floor. Yeah, we had a. It was uh, back then. My father. We lived in an apple grove farm. He loved to make hard cider. And uh, with this, well, he got old whiskey bot barrels. He would take, pick up all the apples, we'd take it to a, a crushing place, and we'd have three or four barrels of apple juice. Well, he'd bump them up a little bit there. And then he would pass them out to all my mother's relatives, and they would all get bought. <laughs> yeah, my, my father was notorious that way. Well, he sounds like a fun guy. Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you something. The uh, road agents before Dad, Hodgman. Henry. In Turtle Tunnel. Henry Hodgman. Henry Hodgman. Yeah, his son died, and then he was paralyzed yeah. trying to save his son. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, Anyways, so they Anyways, they would were. stop by. They would love <laughs> to work our end of the town. They would stop by and my dad would pull out his cider and the gentlemen would sit around the table and they would drink the cider. And go home my, happy. My, my, my father would pass it up, but he'd never drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway. That's the year 
that they rebuilt Twist Hill Road. Yes. From <laughs> Twist Hill to the town line. And uh, it was town. From, from the Twist Hill, Twist Hill South to the Manchester town. Okay. To the Gosstown line. To the Gosstown line, yeah. And uh, so my mother, we had a big table. So she would make meals for the people who work on the road. So my father, we, we, he would pass them cider. You know? Yeah. So there was one particular, he, he used to live on Long Pond Road. Mm -hmm. Well, he was the creator operator back then. So, <laughs> so Mr. I don't want to say his name here because he has family in Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is that he was running the crater. So he fell asleep at the crater. So the town the TRA project was coming around, you know. So, uh, so Henry just said, let's haul him out in the woods here. So he got behind the grater, he ran the grater. Henry Hodgman was a very strong person. He was not weather to alcohol at all. He was strong, big guy. <laughs> you know? Now was that a WPA project? TRA. TRA, what's that? Yeah, TRA, Town Road Assistance. Okay. So this was budgeted in the town, to say what the town uh, projected, probably about uh, five, six, seven thousand dollars to take care of the roads. The, the state would pay the budget. And then we worked for very little. Mm -hmm. So all these projects throughout the Marsh Road, Model on the Road, uh, Robert Rogers, you know, and then it went on under Gold Pond. You know, up and around in there, you know. Right. I remember that was the uh, after the hurricane. After the hurricane, they st st took a big curve out of Gorham Pond Road and straightened it out in front of Edna This was, I think that it was back in 19, I had, that's when I bought my new 10 wheeler. There was about uh, in the 70s, 74, 75. My truck was in 1974, so it had to be 75, 76. <laughs> And then we, yeah, the engineers, town engineers, surveyed the road, put a straight line, and all the way down. That filled up like this. Here. We hauled that, we cut the corners, okay. paved the road. Okay. <laughs> um, getting back to this side of town, tell us some of the things you did growing up as kids. Well, I liked. To, I enjoyed growing snakes there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. what else to? All the brothers do with their little sisters, you know? Yeah. He used to love to make her cry. <laughs> really? But she was a farm girl, so it didn't take long after that that she knew all about snakes. Mm -hmm. She'd go weeding in the garden with her mother there. The snake come around, she'd just take it and throw it away. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. You scared me so bad with the snakes that it lasted for a long time. <laughs> A farm girl. Yeah. Anyways, what would we do? Okay, the the boys were always working with their father. Dear, my father loved mechanical things, so that's why he's so mechanically inclined. And the girls, well, they did housework and prepared meals and laundry and weeded in the garden and things like that. Canning. Canning. Yeah. How about clothes? Did you make your own clothes? My mom, my mom was a, a seamstress. She was really good. Yeah, that's what mothers did yeah. back then. She, she dressed the, the, my older sister and myself, that was, what, nine years apart, but we had identical clothes. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. Especially so. Easter. Easter, it seemed there was a new oh, outfit yeah. for Easter. Oh, my goodness, yes. So, uh, what kind of interactions did you have with the farm animals? How many directions? Interactions with the farm animals. What did you do with the animals? Well, we oh. go look for cows. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No. And then we have to no, you, have, you have to it's know all something. manual work. No? My dad had oxen. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, remember what their names were? The oxen, Stalin, and Ooh. the bulls. Remember the bulls? Malintal and Stalin. The other one. Stalin. What? Uh, Stalin. They were St both Russians. Stalin. Yeah. Stalin and Molikov. He did, he raised a couple of... Um, I did some afterwards. Yes, you did. And, yeah, when I was uh, 16, uh, I got my own pair going, you know. Yeah. So. Did you compete? 
No, no. We were not competitive. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> How many cows did you have and did you sell the milk? Yes. We had 17 cows at one time. 20, 18 cows. 18 cows. So yeah, about 18 cows. And, uh, and, and you milked uh, them all. Uh, 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 they weren't all milking at the same time, but they, they were milked, okay? Dad was doing by hand in the early years, but he got a milking machine and that was much easier. We used to... My father went to an auction with him. I remember we used to go to auctions with my father. I was old enough to follow him around. And he used to look at old wagons. Back then, there was old farms and they were dying down. He bought a Delaval vacuum system that worked with a five horsepower 220 DC, AC. So he had to rewire 220 from the house up around the barn and out there in the in the shed there mm -hmm. where to run that motor. Otherwise, it had, we didn't have that kind of power. This was back. We started, We had power in 1945 here. Yeah. And it was after that that uh, uh, my father had a windmill on top of the barn which uh, generated electricity to charge the batteries before that. Mm -hmm. So we had a Zenith radio, a big one like that there. So um, we listened to what's happening over in Europe. <laughs> so, Did and, you uh, listen to any shows? Radio shows? Radio? Radio shows. Radio show. No, my mother listened to Arthur Godfrey. She would do a laundry there. You would listen to Arthur Godfrey. That's a long time ago. And, uh, <laughs> sure, she would laugh. She thought Arthur Godfrey. My mother was a woman that was brought up in a community area. And when she moved into that farm there, with thin glass windows, windy, no electricity, no heat, yet had burned wood. And, uh, no water. The water. There was water. It was a trickle, you know. And uh, and there was a, we had to live there out of the little out the land. My father was an avid hunter. We ate wild meat, whether it was right or wrong. He would stand in the barn while he was milking the cows. He would get us a dinner for later. Hmm. So from there. And you had gardens? Vegetable, <laughs> vegetable gardens? Yes. Yep. Yep. Did you sell any produce or just? Um, I remember picking blueberries and, and my dad bringing them downtown to sell. Off of Armour's Way. Yes. Down in the wetland there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, when you say into town, you mean into Goffstown? Uh, no, Manchester. Into Manchester. You see, we were kind of. In yes. that direction, we we found in talking to people that there were kind of like almost like little villages within Dunbarton, right? Centered around school and church life, but even more so, East Dunbarton was almost its own village. That's right, because there just was no reason to go to the center of town except for high school graduation and town meeting. And, and you know, that's what we've been and told. also you got to remember our heritage. We were French. And uh, we spoke French, and there were a lot of people in the area that did speak French. So when you got together with people, you spoke French. Did you learn French from your parents? Yes. My parents were raised in bilingual households, and in Maine, where they came down from uh, Canada, they didn't want their children to learn English, so my parents weren't taught French. So uh -huh. therefore, we weren't taught French. Oh, really? But you passed it on. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. How about the were the wheelers or uh, some of the other people on this road? The other people on the road, okay, are well. There, there were, you know, the Marsets. The oh, the wheelers. The wheelers. I, I, we didn't. We the wheelers uh, used to live where Paul Briscoe lived. And Nathaniel yeah. lived. He was a, a professor. That's on the other side you of know? Twist Hill, right? And, uh, so that was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, where did where did your your neighborhood start and end, so to speak? Well, 
really, I don't know, that what? was the Morissettes, the Lemuries, us, the, the Niquettes, the Lafons. Well, now, right were these all corner. Dumbarton households or were some of them no, Goffstown? No, it was uh, Goffstown, Lafons okay. was in Goffstown. Niquette also. Right on the corner of okay. Morse Road and Twist Hill Road, where. Uh, What's his name that lives there? He's a the Godfathers. Huh? Yeah. They were okay. great friends with my dad. Right. right. The yeah. turkey yeah. farmers. Yeah. And there was uh, Red Wheeler lived there with his wife. He had two kids. They used to live up on what they call today's Ranchway Road. Mm -hmm. And so they moved into that house, which was a vacant house. And uh, Red died of a fire in this house. This is your address. Right Hill? there, in the corner of uh, who lives there? Uh, I don't know his name. Well, the, the corner I would remember. Which, road, you know? which two roads? The, the Morris Road okay. and Twist. Yeah, right at the corner. Okay. There's a new oh, house the there. Yes, know? I know who lives there. So he in died in the fire, you know. And uh, and then he was uh, his. He, he was a wheeler, and they had they had, they had a bad drinking problem. But his wife was related to the Mr. granddaughter Noyes. of Eli Noyes and the other Noyes after his son. Mm -hmm. So, and she was about the same same idea. It was uh, so anyway. So that's what happened to him. That, the house burnt here. I remember mm -hmm. he, he was sitting in his chair, and, and, uh, and my father and Donald Montgomery they couldn't find him. He was in there looking, and I said he's right there in his chair. He's burnt in his chair. You could see his hand. Oh. Is this he the newspaper article said that he <laughs> was he was burnt to a crisp? Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, article yeah, yeah, said yeah. he was burnt to a crisp. Uh, yeah, I yeah. couldn't believe they would print no, so. that. You know something? I'd like you to talk about when uh, Dad would pick up some ice blocks in well, Purgatory Pond. Considering uh, our livelihood was off the farm, so he was a dairy farmer. How can you have a dairy farm with no electricity? So back then, you still used to milk the cows by hand. There's no electricity. So he had to back the barn there. I tore all those barn buildings down because they were old, you know, you know what I cleaned up around there. And there was a building, what they call a milk room, and right next to it was an ice room, which insulated with walls with sawdust. So he used to have to go down the purgatory pond in the winter time, there was cut ice, stocking up with ice, you know. So, so they set some ice. With the, the cooler to keep the milk cold, cold was a pit in the ground, like this, thing, you know, and uh, watertight. It would put the cans in there, and if you had to get ice, uh, put ice in there. So this way, we'd have cold milk to bring to Manchester the dairies. The dairies. Mm -hmm. Did you make your he own was butter? A like my father was a good man. Yes, my mother. He was did. a good man. You know, he left a lot of he left a lot of heritage to his children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What method did she use to make her butter? A churn or one of those? <coughs> the paddles? The paddles? <laughs> one of those. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so from there, when the electricity came in, well, those days, because we had a bunch of coolers, you know, big coolers. So we have to put them up in there, get strong. Yeah. Picking those up. Yes, <laughs> I did that. Yes. <laughs> no. I had no biceps and you know? triceps in those days. It's a life lost. When I moved up here in this place, this was one land, no road, no access up here. When I had to cut the wood, they had to come up onto Maury Cody's land here because they can come up here. And I says, I'm going to go back to where I was, on a gravel road, a small house, a barn on the side, a couple of tractors. You need cows now. Huh? You need to get some cows. Well, <laughs> I, I'm trying to As sell cats. some woman that I know that we could raise chickens. <laughs> no, no, she hates chickens. <laughs> <laughs> So you also had pigs on the farm, I understand. Uh, yes, there was as much as what two hundred pigs at one time. Wow, there was a lot, and they were free range. There was no pig smell at all, was there? No. 
So how did how did the butchering? Did you sell them live or did you live? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you didn't get involved. Although with my dad butchered his for us right. for our needs, but yes. Yeah. That, that, that was really something when Dad would butcher a pig. My mother was there, and I know maybe I don't know. Do you like blood sausage? I don't know. That, that, that kind of lifestyle. <laughs> blood sausage. My mother was there with her pan and she had prepared it. She had some kind of salt, coarse type salt. And she, my father would bleed the pig and she would take the salt. And she would make the most fantastic blood sausage you've ever seen. It was, I've never tasted anything better than that. Really. It was great. Did they call it blood sausage or boudin creole or boudin? Boudin. 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 Yes. Why don't you tell I used to love boudin. We had to have, we went to St. Jean the Baptist at the West Side. We had sandwiches. Boudin. They saved everything. We ate. Oh, oh yeah. Animals. Oh, yeah. You tell that to people. Oh, I gotta eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We ate, all we ate the, the whole thing, you though. We ate the whole animal. Yeah, ate the whole animal, oxtail yeah. stew. I mean, there was all kinds of things you you ate. Um, so, how about um, did you have pets in addition to pets? Yeah, yeah. he had his bulls. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> bulls, your bulls. Yeah, I had small them. Yeah, I trained them. But there were there were a couple of teammates. They were about the same size, and uh, they started all right. But one of them was a. Uh, what they call is uh, an airshare, which was a smaller breed, and the other one was a Holstein. So what happened with time here, one of them outgrew the other, and <laughs> they were real big, you know? And, and what happened in the life of my father had these, they would take care of these, animals. they were full-size beefs, you know? And uh, they had an argument on top of the hill, on Twist Hill Road, where there's a big house there, and there's a tree on top there. There's a big house on, and right next to the uh, horse farm there. And they had an argument during the night. And one of them went in battle with the other one and killed them. Can you imagine? So, wow. So Which one was won? Was huh? it the big one or the little one? Oh, they killed the little one. The big one, the old CV was a big one. Yeah, so, old uh, oh, sad. Know. Right. You know? Sad. Uh, tragic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you eat it? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. So what did you do for fun? Was there swimming? Was there skating? Sledding? Uh, oh, horseback riding? There you go. That wonderful hill from that tree that he's mm -hmm. this, talking about. Mm -hmm. That was the best tobogganing hill ever. I mean, you go from the top of the hill all the way down to the, to the pond that's behind there. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of that, tobogganing. Tobogganing. Yeah, you know, sledding. Yeah. Well, we had, my mother was a good person. She, she come, would come and sled with us, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and well, there was nobody around there. And uh, we had the neighbors there. But there were another family, you know, in that house there where, uh, right, where, uh, with the, the lives there, right at the corner of uh, Purgatory Pond Road. They yeah, it, it expanded now. Mm -hmm. More sets. House. More right. sets. Yeah. There were 13 people living in that house. And they had, they, they were poor. They, they lived off chickens and selling eggs. So, so my father would provide them with milk. But that, they became with this here. They all came to this school there. The Wheeler Montelona School. school. Yeah. The Mo no, the Montelona School? Or the they all came to Montelona School, Montelona. school okay. you know? And, uh, and with this here, this is what you showed me, the book, George Morris said. Mm -hmm. They wrote the book. He was the oldest son. Yes. But they were poor. Getting back to school for a minute, <laughs> how did they get to Montelona? Did they go all the way up Morse Road and then down? Or did they I, cut through I the woods? I don't really know how. No, I'm sure they didn't cut through the okay. woods. What's that? Right. And they didn't go there. Um, I think they went in elementary school. Once it got 
high school. They went to Manchester. Right. So, yeah. so I'm, we're trying to figure out with the Wheeler School when that school was no longer used. I think it was sometime around 1890 but they had moved it to the top of the hill and we no one seems to know what happened to it. Hill. Yes. Yeah, okay. No one seems to know what happened to it in the end. Did it just fall down? Did they take it down? Yeah, it was just foundations there. Like the house was gone. Now what happened back then, uh, people heated with there was no electricity. Mm -hmm. So people heated out of like real big fireplace. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, so they had they had chimney fires. And like the old farmhouse back then would be your father's farm, it was not tar paper roof. It was wood shingles. Right. So these things here, they were colder so it wouldn't leak, it wouldn't what. Well, you got a spark coming out of there, the land on those roofs, you lose the house. Do you think that the old Wheeler School burned down? That that was not the old Wheeler School. The old no, no. No, the Wheeler that was that's what, that's what I call here was the Carter Barn, that's what I remember. Okay. You know, yeah. from Bobby but, Ardwick, you know? but but yeah. we're trying to figure out what happened to the Wheeler School. What happened to what the old school? What happened to the old building? I don't know. I've never seen a building there, but there was foundation. There was footing. Okay. Are and those still there? Yeah, yeah. There's some kind of rock. So they built the house right next to it. Okay. And they there's some kind of rock still in place there, you know. But he put a septic system in the area because it was all edge, you know. Okay. So. So, and I own the property right next to it, where the wall is there. Mm -hmm. I was right, right that on Twist on Twist Hill. I own right next to it. You know, so. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it looks to me like they had to go quite a ways to go to school, mm. and I don't know how they got there. Mm. I, I really don't know. Which way? But the actually how the Morissettes went to school at Mount Alona. The th they all went to school there. Yeah, yeah, but how did they get there? Well, well, back then they had a car. They had one car, and they hauled them like they did when they were going to school in Manchester. Mm -hmm. they, they would bring them to school. They they walk there, you know. Right. They hired so, different so, people in so, town. So they the walked. Cars. The parents had a car. Okay. They would drive them to school. Okay. And plus. I'm sure Mr. Morissette had chickens. He raised chickens and he had eggs and he had a car. The car was to deliver the eggs to his Come you back know, with the customers in customers in Manchester. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he dropped off his kids. Okay. Probably. They were very they, they did well from where they came from. Mm -hmm. All of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. My no. uh my mother was called when the triplets were born, and I guess she was not, she wasn't, she didn't deliver, but she was there, and uh, they packed the kids, the babies in the car, and my dad brought them down to the hospital, mom too, you know, I mean, it's like, okay. So I think that that's was a, mentioned in the book. That, that was a big yes. thing for her. Well, the, the triplets apparently were a really big thing in Dunbarton. Yeah. Uh, they were in virtually all the parades in some way, shape, or form, uh -huh. pushing baby carriages or doing something all dressed alike. Um, they apparently at one time all worked in the same place, and they're actually still alive. One passed away, I think. Ooh, that would be I real think recently. Diane. Diane passed Diane away. Diane is still alive. Diane is still Yeah, there? she lives on Smith Road. Oh, okay. She had married uh, an old, well, she was going with Gene Drupal's and then. Okay, I'm And then she married, she met this guy, an older guy. He was a, a widow, widower, and they adopted kids from all over. Mm -hmm. She couldn't have any kids. Right. You know, so they had to make this live on Smith. I don't know. About four or five years out. ago, there was a picture of all yeah, three yeah. of them in the newspaper. I have yeah. the picture. John Silvers gave me the picture of all three of them. In the newspaper? Way back, okay. I put it in the pickup that I had back then, and I sold the pickup three times. <laughs> so get my efforts in a picture. <laughs> All right, now what about church? Did you guys go to church around yes. here? Yes, Saint Jude the Baptist. Yeah. Oh, okay. Baptist. They were very religious people. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we had, had to get up yeah, really yeah, yeah, early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. We had to be at six o'clock mass. I remember just like 
you know, <laughs> not being able to stay awake, you know. And uh, yeah, we were there. Now there's just one brother we left. There. You got the triplets. That's it. Yeah. Marcel. Oh yeah. Yes, just so I remember. I used to talk to him there in Manchester, and, and he moved away. And the girls that live in uh, in Derry. Okay. You see the picture of the paper? When? Well, they were 70, 75 or 76. Was it the same? Was uh, last year? A couple years ago. Yeah, a yes. picture of all three of them in a the paper. Huh? And they were all the same age. They have a front page of Union Leader. They were all the same age? Really? Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I don't remember anything anyway, so I lived at 3454. <laughs> we worked on that yesterday. For so, all. where did you two go to school? St. Jean the Baptist. St. Jean, so went to school and then, and yeah. then that was an elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went to St. Maurice. Mm -hmm. So, you really didn't have any reason to go into the center of Dunbarton, did you? No. <laughs> so, we really didn't know. We don't really know a lot of people in Dunbar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We and, really don't, you yeah. know. And when they shut the school down here, then the kids have to go to Dunbar School where Town Hall is. Mm -hmm. So Bob Baker, Robert Baker, he bought a bus for the sake of the time he was gonna haul all the kids there on Route thirteen, Mansion Road, a little bit on the grapevine, but he could not come on Twist Hill Road. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say because you because as you go down there, the first from the corner, we cut through some ledger. Well, the road was down like this, make a hairpin turn, and back into a wetland. The bus couldn't get through there, so so he had Eli Noyes. He was a selectman. He had a station wagon. He would haul the kids around up there before school. Now, what kind of bus? Oh, he bought a school bus. A regular yellow yeah, school yeah, bus? Yeah, 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 school bus. It's not as big as they have today, you know. Okay. So the town bought a school. Well, I think he bought it. Yeah. You know? And then rent. Yeah, yeah, Bob Baker. So he had a lease, and uh, and in the summer, well, he would keep the bus in the town garage right next to the grader. He had to keep it inside until the town bought a sander. So then he had to take his bus home. Mm -hmm. his bus. <laughs> so that was the first real school bus in Dunbarton. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what time that was roughly? What year? Um, yeah. What what year? The year that we did to sail back into the mid sixties. That's when we started there with your father and to try to straighten up Mike Michelle Belanger did the blasting there. He was a, he was a kid too, you know. <laughs> But he was into military explosives, so all poor people are trying to straighten out this damn town, you know? It's true. It's different now. Yeah. Do you know if anybody in the area had cameras? Cameras? My dad was a photographer in his early years. When he was a when he lived in Canada. He got into photography. He loved to take pictures, but you know, <laughs> it didn't happen once they were here. No time. No time. Milking the cows and right. that type of thing. Didn't have time. What was Argus? Oh. Your parents had an Argus camera. And they did? Remember they had an old Argus. And <laughs> yeah. That took, took, oh yeah, that was the first, I remember that's an Argus and very, you don't hear of that anymore, you know? I never heard of it And myself. your father, when he was single, and he came from Canada, he lived in Concord, St. Paul School, worked over there, and, the, and then he bought the farm, still worked there, you know? And uh, he would develop photographs. Yep. He was, he would photograph. But then he would know the chemical that you used to develop photographs. This is where we got some of these pictures, you know. And then they came out B, well, she was from the Flatlands. Well, she had a movie camera, you know. 
I lost all these pictures in the house when I was birthday. I had all those pictures when we were little kids here. My mother was a little hip here. Uh, yeah, the house burnt. <laughs> That's a shame because they, there were scenes of the, uh, you know, the ice cutting and everything mm. like that. And there, there was, well. Huh? Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. What? <laughs> now, when at one point you had no telephones, obviously. Can you remember when you got your first telephone? When my father became road agent, the Dunbar telephone went as far as, I think it was your place or the Godbout's place. They had a phone there. And how the phone was back then, it was from tree to tree with a hard wire. So, with, with the, the, an insulator, you know, so, <laughs> So, when we had to start having a phone, well, Donald Montgomery had to invest the millions of dollars in this town here. Why? Because there was no communication. They didn't know where the hell we were over there. <laughs> yeah, we were there. That was, that, that was tough. The party lines, I remember the party lines. There were 10 people on the party line, <laughs> you know. It's like, so what did you use the phone for? I mean, did you just... Or was it a r rare when you used it? We didn't need the phone, really, mm -hmm. unless there was an emergency, you know? You, don't, you really didn't use the phone very often. Unless you wanted to, okay, like, if I wanted to call my mother, yes, I would use the phone, you know? I mean, once we're settled in, you know? Once you establish mm -hmm. yourself. But, yeah. We didn't use the phone very often. It just came in, in about the 60s, just where he, he, he got rid of all those hard wire phones and he had a flat wire phone with two together, you know. So he would run this around, he would put a pole here, two poles here, you know. That's so cool. we got a phone. Hi, uh, what's it, Allison? Uh, Arlene? Uh, Montgomery, what's it? Oh. Arlene Montgomery. Arlene Montgomery, and uh, she would take turns with her father. Uh, oh, there were switchboards, you know? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about your first vehicles? Car. Cars. Your first car. It was a 1948 Buick Roadmaster convertible with all power windows. I had four flat tops, ball tires and had three spares. We used to go to Hampton Beach with it. What <laughs> color was it? Well, then, we didn't have all these shiny guys around, you know. <laughs> you know, we kind of liked them. And they let us go back. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, they're getting off the ground, you know. We did, we behaved, you yeah? So, how that died, how that died, I parked it in front of your father's house, your mother's house. He had an antenna on top of the house. Well, the wind blew the antenna. It went right down on the roof. <laughs> so there goes your convertible, huh? <laughs> so, so and after that, my other car, your great sister, Janine, I inherited a Studebaker. You know, so I ran that for a while until I had an accident. And then I traded with pick, I repaired it, you know. And I traded it. And then after that, I bought another car. I, I, oh, I was running a 1942 Dodge Army truck oh, to wow. work. I used to work on a county farm. Right. You liked cars. Down the county farm, 1942 work. Well, that's what was available, you know. <laughs> so tell us about some of your years as a road agent. What are some of the things you remember the most? I remember, mm -hmm. I drive through this town, sweetheart, and I live this all over again, in details. I miss my old partners. Like I said yesterday, the survivor is Bobby Ordway, as what he was, as simple, as poor as he was, illiterate. 
he was willing to work his heart to death. And I bet today, I bet he's still there. You know, with my father. You know, I still, I worked on it, but then when I got married, when I started getting married, had a family, you know, and I could fool around with this, I had a wife and a kid, you know, and uh, so uh, Saturday night or something, well, you know, you gotta go out. And uh, so, uh, so my father and Bobby Ordway were the masters of the town. And then Roland Godbell came around. He, the Godbell farm mm -hmm. there. And then he decided, well, he would buy an old army truck, a, a 1953 or a late 40s army truck. So he would plow a lot of the town, you know. And then he helped us a lot. He was an avid woodcutter. And along with my father, they came from a land of hardship up there. They cleared all these roads here with trees and everything. We have no idea how little and narrow it was back then. Big trees, little, you know, you know. And I worked with them. Yeah. And you liked it? I had no choice. I had three kids, two kids to begin with, and a wife. In a house, a house, and no heat in the house. Burn wood. <laughs> <laughs> you needed to cut those trees. Well, we'd take some of the trees home that would burn wood. You know, in this newer house that I had, that I have, that I had back then. Well, but the old house there had a stove in the kitchen. And there was no heat in the house, so this uh, right across from. Uh, go to Pond Road there, there was a, a doctor there, he was retiring from his house, and he had a little house there. So he asked my father, he says, uh, Armin, you won't tear that house, I'm not going to use it anymore. So I looked in there, I picked up a, a Lennox hot air furnace. So I took that all apart, brought it in there, connected it, but I had a problem in that old house there. The chimney didn't come to the ground. The chimneys were supported on it, like it was this archway, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to jack that chimney up and build a wall to there so I could have a heating system with hot air. <laughs> and uh, did it work? Of course, the house burned. <laughs> now, there was a scenario about that. My house was on fire. Uh, the fire department, well, they call, they call public service. They come up there, public service. Uh, no, they call Concord Electric. They, Concord Electric, we can't touch that house, it's still hot. So the house burns. Done by, with 250 gallons of water in 1954, Ford. So, by that time, they stood by, assistance, huh? Public service has to come from Manchester, knock out the transformer. That was the last house. That was the last house there. Yeah. See, <laughs> on the other side of Twist Hill, it's concrete. Mm -hmm. On this side of Twist Hill, I was on a ladder that would have ballot with a garden hose that came out of my house. It was still a water pump down south of the hill. Yeah, what are you going to do? You know, really, the damn house is going up in smoke. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. so from there, I pushed the house out of the way. Gone. A new turn. In he, the fall, did, he did not waste any time. He fall, got right to work. He did, he got, he just right his task. He did a fantastic job. And in the spring, well, he we moved He didn't feel sorry for himself. He just went and did his work. This guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We lived in that house down here, down on the, the farmhouse. Down on, mm -hmm. yeah. We lived down here, and there was an abandoned house and uh, the rodents all over there. Well, uh, Helen was magic, and she had a small child. We had just got a baby. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, the hot car, man. The, Who just the had hot air system. His, his blew wife. Up oh, and it his was, wife. It was not. There was nobody in there. So, so whether I live there or live in the city, so I can't be there and do this job. My father, your father was getting old back then. Mm -hmm. My father had a hard life. Yes. And it, and it, it, it wore him out also. Right. Him and Roland talked about back in 1969. Mm -hmm. They were tired, those two, when we had all that storm. Yeah. You know, and uh, coming back to that. It's called devotion so, to your job. Uh, you know, so therefore I had to live here. I don't want to let anybody <laughs> down. And that was the problem. Oh well. That's I not think today. Job. That does not happen mm -hmm. today. No. That's a sign of true character, though. Right. It is, but it's right. it's self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know. Uh -huh. It's self-sacrifice. It's not. You know, like I was talking to this Nathan there. He broke his truck last little storm there, mm -hmm. and he's a young kid, he's, 30, he's 40, he's going to be 40 years old, he's worried about being 40. And he says, uh, listen Nathan, you got to tear that tree, he worked on it all last summer, and now he's got to work on it again all this summer. I said, you look at it, at one thing at a time, the process of elimination, and then you get, you get to the core of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patience. All right. What else would you like I'm to do? I'm tired of this interview here. <laughs> I hope you don't put me on channel. <laughs> They're doing commercials. <laughs> well, we can certainly Talk wrap it up. Commercial. We can certainly wrap it up. It's, it's been great. Tell, in general, how well, do you feel about having grown up here in Dunbar? Yeah, all right. East Dunbar. What did happen to your black hair? Well, Did you, you still have them? It's, you it's, had black hair? Well, it was yeah, this is the last time I saw you they were drunk. Yeah, this was how many years ago? Oh, and and then about I, 20 years ago. Yes, huh? I know. I did. I did. It was much it's darker black back hair. Then. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? As far as Dunbarton is concerned, we obviously did not go far away from home. Right. We obviously like living here. We love the country. We like the space. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be able to live in town. Look at her in house. city. Mm -hmm. With I them. love her house. She her did, house. She's died. One of these Don't days, I'll get the tour. When they bought her, not they bought that house. I says they ought to tear it down. And yes. it's been fifty years of love. And then sure it started. <laughs> we should. My have. wall. The wall fell in. We win again, we build another wall. That's it. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's that's a whole other story. That's here. a whole other story. Oh yeah, well, to say that she's part of that gene mm -hmm. of struggle. Right. And you were there helping us all Oh, the way. I didn't do much. I'm, yes. I'm a carpenter. I'm not a carpenter. <laughs> no, but you were there <laughs> helping us all the way. Huh? <laughs> You, you helped us all the way. You're still oh, here. Another you, calendar. Didn't, you didn't move out of town. You didn't move out of your neighborhood. You stayed Same. in your neighborhood. You stayed. All right. All right. Are we all done with this here? Thank you very He's much. You've got to go home. <laughs> Thank you.